Well, hello, 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 fellow people. Uh, welcome back to the channel. If it's been a while since you've been here, um, hi, <laughs> how are you? Uh, welcome back, it's good to see you. So, what we're doing here today, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, uh, I'm just gonna show, uh, this whole, the whole point of this video is to create a full stack application using, uh, the Python stuff that we've been learning here at Coding Dojo, um, from start to finish. We're gonna do a project from scratch, and yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Without further ado, let me just switch my display. There we go. All right. So we start in MySQL Workbench. Easy enough. Um, and if we head over to my models, I already have a database created. Uh, this. Uh, heroes underscore db this is what we're going to be using for our project here it's actually called hero underscore db and you want to remember this we need this name in order to query our database and do all kinds of stuff so that being said I already have a table I called it heroes if let's uh, dive into it a little bit um, we come in here click the create a new table place it down rename it whatever we want in my case heroes um, I have an ID, and we check primary key, not null, and AI, auto increment is what that means. That means this is going to be the primary key for our table, for this specific table. And then moving on down the list, if I can make that a little bigger, there we go. We have first name, 100 characters, um, for char, of course. I'm going to put not null on these, last name, quirk. Age, I've set to an integer. And then, of course, we have created at and updated at. And over here on the right, I have right-clicked and I clicked current timestamp for this one right here for created at. And then, of course, we want default current timestamp on update current timestamp. Now, once you have your database all done, you've got to get it into your local instance. Otherwise, it's not going to be accessible to our... Uh, full stack application so um, you'll click on database up here and you'll hit forward engineer this is definitely gonna look a little different for the Mac users so create your database however you need to get it to your local uh, instance and your virtual server and your application can ac access the database so we get this screen don't touch any of this move on uh, generate drop schema, you don't have to check that, but I might just to clear out the database because there is stuff in there. Uh, because I've done this project once already, so I'm gonna hit next. Type in your password to log into your local instance. Hit next. I like to copy all of this code, just in case. Um, I click it several times because, you know, I get worried. <laughs> so we do that. And there we go, if we get all the check marks, we are good to go. And we close. Now it is in our local instance. Let's double check that by going back to the home button up here. We're gonna click on the dolphin, click my local instance, enter our password again. <clears throat> and we should see it pop up in this list. If you don't, for whatever reason, you can click this little refresh button right here and it should pop up. So I'm double clicking on it. And we can view the tables, which is just heroes. And we can view the columns in that table. And there they all are. So, let's say I wanted to select all from heroes just to see if anything's in here. Click the lightning bolt to run that query. We've got an empty table. We are good to go. We've got an empty database. It's in our local instance. We are done with MySQL for now. So, that brings us to VS Code. So, we're going to minimize this. Here's VS Code. I already have a folder uh, created just for this project. Keep it nice and simple. Um, we're going to start off not modularized, uh, but towards the end of the video, I will probably go ahead and modularize this a little bit uh, just to, you know, for the sake of clarity. So for now, all we're going to need is a server.py, of course. Create that bad boy. Um, I should have had my other stuff pulled up, but that's okay. We can definitely 
do that here in just a minute. We're going to open up our terminal with Control J, navigate to this folder, which we're already there, but just for the sake of clarity, once again, we CD, put a space after it, grab the folder, drag it down. Whoops. And it splits your terminal in half, apparently. I didn't even know you could do that. Let's get rid of that one. Can I get rid of you? Uh, I don't know why that's happening. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Well, that's weird. Why is this... Okay, here we go. We got our terminal. All right. So we're in the directory that we want our Flask project to live in. So now, this might be different for other users, but... The basic thing you want to get in here is pip env shell, uh, no, not shell, excuse me, pip env install flask, and put a space after that and type pi my sql. That will allow us to connect to the database once we have that installed. So, we are going to do that. Oh, it looks like I moved my whole explorer down here. I see what I did. There we go. And as you can see, it's creating these pip file and pip file .lock. If you open those up, they're just basically a bunch of crazy nonsense that you don't need to know, really. But it's a lot of hashes and all kinds of stuff. So, there's that. Uh, now, inside of our My Hero Academia file, we're going to create a, file, a folder called templates. Has to be spelled exactly like this, otherwise it's not going to work. And we're going to create an index.html within that templates folder. We're going to get some good old boilerplate here. I like to use um, some different bootstrap and stuff like that to link up here. But whatever you want is fine. We're going to call this page create a hero. Exclamation. And for now, all I'm going to do is throw an h1 in here saying it works yo. And that's just going to tell me, hey, I've got the server set up, everything's cool, and it works. Uh, for now, what I like to do when I am building a Flask project, I like to have my Python files over here and my HTML over here so I can make sure things are playing nice with each other. So, uh, that being said, server.py is going to hold all of our... Um, app.routes for now until we modularize. Um, so we are going to need from Flask, import Flask, and we'll also do render temp, oops, render underscore template. Uh, we'll probably need redirect in here as well. And request. No session needed for this particular project, but we will be using those a little bit further down the line, of course. Uh, now I need the whole thing to initialize the flask file, which I don't remember right off the top of my head. So we're going to change gears here just a little. Uh, yes, please save that. I'm just opening up my file explorer so I can kind of copy and paste some stuff that I don't quite remember. Uh, my Hero Academia is right up here. Perfect. Let's get our server.py open back up and our index.html. There we go. I never said this was going to be super professional, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, back in week three, let's see. There's our playground assignment, users. Let's look for the user CR. There we go. This one is not modularized as well. Let's take a look at what I've got in server. So we also are importing the uh, class that we're going to be creating to query the database with. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but what we need here is this bad boy right here. And we also need this down here, the if name equals main, then run debug equals true. We're going to copy that. Anything else down here I should know about? Nope, doesn't look like it. All right. There we go. Now, we've got that, which is great. Uh, we can get rid of our user CR pi for now. Uh, and now we need to create an at app dot route. And we are going to, uh, let's see, we're gonna create a root route. 
And that's how you do that. Just a little slash in between the quotes there. And then we're going to define index, passing nothing in because we don't need to pass anything in here. And all we're gonna do is simply return render underscore template, template, excuse me, and type whatever HTML file you want it to render, which in this case is index.html. Save the changes on that, auto formatter kicking in, great, love it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna grab a bootstrap file real quick. Hold on just a sec. Uh, I think I have it in my downloads actually, let's find out. Download solar.css, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work great. So inside of here, I'm gonna create a file called static, and that is going to house all of my CSS for this project. So if we just drag solar into it, should show up right there, boom. And now here, uh, we need to link that CSS file. So we do link and go down to CSS. This requires some really janky, weird Jinja syntax that I don't love and I can never remember, <laughs> but it is what it is. So let's see what if I did it on my user's CR assignment. I just did basic bootstrap with that. Uh, let's go to a more recent one. Dojo's Ninja's Crud I did it on for sure. Well, let's see, Flask app, templates. Here we go. There it is. So this syntax right here is what we need. So I'm gonna copy this and we are going to get rid of these curly braces and paste it in. That is not the right name and we don't have a CSS file containing it. Typically you would, I think. Um, I don't know exactly what the industry standard is for that so I can't really speak on it too much but that is what you need right there in order to uh, import your bootstrap file. So we have this. We have Flask imported, render template is imported, currently being used right here. And we have our index.html. This is all we need for right now to see if this is properly connected up and see if it works. So make sure both files are saved, change directory, put a space, drag that folder down, hit enter, just like that. We are in the My Hero Academia folder, so that's good. Now we just do pip env shell, and it looks like the shell launched, perfect, pi server.py. And when you see this warning developmental server, shows the IP that you're on and the port, and this debugger pin, that means your server is now active. So if we go to a web browser, ignore my weird YouTube uh, suggested stuff here, not found, okay, that means something went wrong. So, let's see, from Flask import Flask, redirect, if run debug true, yes, app equals Flask name, what else am I missing here? Let's see, that's the root route, we defined index, index.html. Hmm. Why is this not working? Uh, this is part of our troubleshooting process. Templates is spelled correctly. We have Flask, we have PyMySQL. What else do we need here? Hmm. Get fave icon. What is this? I don't know what that is. Um. Let me try and refresh the page. It's on my other screen. Okay, still saying not found. What did I miss? Um, let's see. Let's see. I am not 100% sure why this is not working the way that I want it to. If static file name equals solar.css, this is correct. Let's go take a look at one of my other projects and see what I might be missing here. Let's pull up this server.py. 
Okay, that's good. We have all of that. App equals flask name. That is required in there. Um, so what am I missing here? Let's see. Oops, I don't want to open up the whole folder. Um, let's take a look at server pi again. Import flask, render template, yada yada. App route is that. Render index.html. It's exactly what we have here. Index.html is spelled correctly. Spelled correctly here. Define index. Interesting. Why are we not found? Let's shut down the server, exit out of the virtual environment. Uh, we're gonna, now that we're in the file for sure, um, we're gonna pip env install flask pi my sql again just to make sure that they're both good. Succeeded, succeeded, everything's good. Okay. Pip env shell pi server.py. Alright, it's running. I'm gonna refresh this. Why are we not found? Huh. Localhost 5000. Interesting. Um, T E M P L A T E S. That is correct. T -E M P L A T E S. Huh. Let me see something real quick. Hold on. There might be something funky going on with my with my virtual environment stuff. Definitely could be. Could also because I have another folder named that My Hero Academia, and that could be throwing it off. Let's name this one too, just to differentiate. Change directory back into here just in case it's getting confused. Pippi and V shell. Pi server dot pi. Whoops. Minimized my page by accident. Let's refresh. Still not found. Okay, so something else is going on. Um, which is very bizarre. Hmm. Exit. Maybe exit again. Okay, that just exits the terminal. Bring that back up. Very weird. Um... I don't see why this wouldn't be working. That's that's the part that's concerning to me the most. Hmm. Now the virtual environment's not active, of course, so. Um, let's try my user CR assignment and see if that pulls up. Hit the NV shell. Pi server dot pi. All right, see if that one works. Okay, that one works. So, what is going on here? Did I forget something? I may have. I definitely may have forgotten something. Let's type exit into that. I'm going to copy this and replace what we've got with that. I don't see any errors at all. This is not at all going how I planned. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, I think I know why. Yeah, I think I know why. <laughs> this needs to be on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Welcome to Python, everybody. It's fun. It's a good time. We all have fun here. Um, change directory. <laughs> oh, boy. Pip env shell. Uh, pi server.py. Oh, boy. All right, let's refresh this. There we go. It works, yo. All right, cool. And we've got a cool-looking website already. Okay. 
Back to where we were. <laughs> Sorry, I've wasted so much of y'all's time doing that. Okay, moving on. Now, we are successfully, we have successfully created that. Perfect. Great. Good to go. I'm going to leave the HTML alone for a little bit until we figure out exactly, uh, until we figure out the rest of the Python side of things. So we're going to work from database to back end, which is the server, to the front end and work our way to the HTML, make them play nice, and boom, we'll go from there. All right. So another file we need inside of our... Uh, our folder here is going to be hero.py. Now this is going to be where we define our user class. And actually, before, before we get into that, we need to import something in here that we haven't created yet. So we'll create another file. It's going to be called mysqlconnection.py. P-Y. There we go. What's going to go in here, you ask? Well, I'm so happy you asked. Hang on just a second, I'll show you. Why is that open? Um, all of this stuff right here. It's going to be the exact same for every project that you do here at the dojo, at least. So, we're going to copy this, exit out, paste it in my SQL connection, save it, we're done. Leave it alone. Unless your password is different, you will have to change that right here. So if it's banana, you would just simply type banana, which mine is not. It is root. So, yeah, if your password is different, switch it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Other than that, leave this how it is, and it should function properly. So we are done with that. And now in here, in our hero.py, we're going to say from mysql connection import connect to MySQL, just like that. Now, I'm going to have to pull up one of my classes um, over here, just so I can kind of mirror what I'm seeing here because these classes for me, I'm still getting the swing of it, but we're gonna call ours hero. So we're defining a class called hero. This DB variable you don't have to do, I just find it easier personally um, because instead of having to type whatever your database name is, which in our case, if we remember, it is hero underscore DB. So let's type that in there. So instead of having to type that in all the time, we have it assigned to a variable. So we can simply pass in that variable instead of having to type hero DB uh, everywhere that we want to query the database. So we are defining initializing in it, in it. And now we have these columns here. They look a lot like the columns in our database, don't they? Interesting how that works. And that's exactly what they are, is every column from your database must be here. Otherwise your query is going to backfire and you're going to have a bad time. So yeah. The stuff in the string in between the square brackets must match the columns in your database. So if we go back to our database and look at our columns that we have, we have first name, last name, quirk, age, created at, update that. Easy enough. And also ID. We also have ID. That's the first one. Now you don't want to forget the ID. <laughs> so we need first, last, quirk, age, created, updated. Got it. All right, so self dot, and it's easy enough just to make it like this, just for the sake of simplicity, it is so much easier if you just do that. So I'm gonna copy created at and updated at from this uh, project over here. Self dot last name equals data last underscore name. Self dot quirk. Quirk was next, right? Yeah, Quirk. And it also the order does matter here. You might not think it does, but it does. Because it's going to go in order of how your database is structured. So, self.age equals data index of age. And then created at and updated at. Boom. 
copied them from earlier. Double check and verify. ID first, last quirk, age created at, updated at. ID first, last quirk, age created at, updated at. Perfect. All right, we are good to go. Perfect. Now we can start creating some class methods here, just like over here uh, in this finished project of mine, where we can run queries and then return those queries. And this is the function built into Python and into MySQL connection, that file we copied. That is built into there and allows us to query the database. So the first one I want to do is allow us to be able to create a hero because everybody needs a hero. So we're going to use the at class method decorator here. I am going to define it as create hero for the sake of clarity, of course. Now we want to pass in the class, obviously. And we also want to pass in some data to this bad boy because we're sending data to the database and we want it to be saved in there, right? Makes sense, to me at least. We assign our query itself to a string called query, and we are going to, just like a SQL command, insert into heroes. That's the name of our table, right? Yes, it is. Perfect. Always gotta double check this stuff. You don't have to, but I like to, just in case. And you name your columns here, first name, and we're gonna turn this into a uh, multi-line query as well actually so we're gonna do the triple quotes there we go last name uh, quirk was next I believe uh, oh it's right here in front of my face yes quirk age uh, created at and comma bring it down to the next line updated at. Okay, and outside those parentheses, we put in the values, and we have to use, once again, some really weird syntax. As you can see over here, whoops, on the right side of your screen, we have to use some weird syntax. So we say values, and we start to pass in those values. We do percent parentheses, it'll auto populate to, and an S at the end. When it turns blue like this, it might be different for you, but it turns blue for me. That means that it is working. So we've got first name, parentheses, last underscore name. Don't forget that S. Uh, parentheses, or percent parentheses, quirk. Get the S, comma. Parentheses and percent age. And do that. And what I like to do for these created at and updated at is simply put now with a set of parentheses after it and a comma. That will timestamp it for right when we create the hero. So there we go. That is our full query right there. However, we haven't used this data variable yet, and we don't we haven't told this class method what we want to do with that data variable that it's taking in yet. So we're gonna come down here. Every function has to have a return, and that's, at the end of the day, this is a function. So, we're gonna return, connect to MySQL. In parentheses, we put the class dot. This is where your database name would go. So, uh, but we assigned it to a variable, so instead of typing out the full database name, we can just put our dot db variable, and there it is. And now, dot query db. And we pass in the query and the data. And that's it. That is our create method. Now, in order to use this method, we need to import that into our server.py. So let's do that real fast. From hero import hero with a capital H. Should be nice and green, but kind of faded out like that if you did it correctly. So, <clears throat> There we go. That is that is that. We're also going to well, we'll we'll worry about the other class methods here in a minute. Okay. So now we've successfully connected to the database. We know what database we're using. We have our columns in the database and a class to kind of, you know, use to pass data back and forth. 
We have it imported into our server.py and we have a create hero method. So everything is now set, almost, almost set for us to work on some HTML and get a hero created because that sounds fun. Create your hero. And because we are using bootstrap, I'm going to get a little bit fancy with this. Command prompt Emmet abbreviation dot container. Get it all in a container. Bring it off the edge a little bit. And we're going to say, uh, let's see, text center, I believe is what I want. Yes. Okay, that's going to center up all the text in this div that we created in our container. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And now I am going to be looking for some bootstrap classes super quick for my HTML just to make it look nice. If you don't know how to do that, by the way, if you just go to getbootstrap.com, you can search for anything you want in here. I like my forms to be in cards because I find these to be kind of nice looking. Um, particularly, I'll show you a different style here in just a minute. So I'm going to copy this HTML right here. I'm going to head back to VS Code, paste that in. We're going to get rid of the image because we're not doing an image. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, auto Save so it auto formats for me. And I need to change my spaces to two. So it stops yelling at me. There we go. Perfect. All right. We're going to call this your hero information. And now I'm going to get rid of this card text stuff right here. We need a form to take in the data from the user um, so that way uh, they can actually put some information in here. We can snag it and send it to the database with our hero uh, class here. So uh, let's look at some forms on Bootstrap. Form. They have great forms here. These ones are pretty nice. Um, let's see, we have disabled forms. I don't really need that. Okay. So actually what I want is an unordered list to put my form stuff in. Uh, and I think, let's see, that's a table. We'll be using tables soon. Uh, let's see, example input, okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's go over here and look at form control. That's what I want. <laughs> here we go. All right. Yeah, we want uh, we want this stuff. So let's copy that, and we're gonna put it inside of this card body div, and do that. There we go. All right. So your hero information. Here's all of our stuff. Form. So now, this is where we also want to match up the columns in our database, except for the ID. We don't need the ID uh, for our form here. So, uh, our label, our first label is going to be first name, just like that. Input type is going to be first name. ID also needs to match the name of the label. It doesn't need to, but... Uh, if, if it does, it makes things a little bit smoother. So, I don't want a placeholder, but I do absolutely need this. A name equals whatever the name uh, of your column in your database is. So, this is going to be first underscore name. You want to make sure those match up. Matchy, matchy, like CISO says. So, we've got that. We've got last area, or last name here. Last name, uh, we're going to put last name, and we don't want a text area here, we want an input, so maybe that was the wrong form to grab, but yeah, my bad. Input, type equals, oh, type, we can actually just put text here, there we go. Alright, input type text, class equals form control just to make it look nicer uh, let's see 
ID equals last underscore name. And of course, name equals, oops, name equals last underscore name. All right, there's that. And we're going to just copy these bad boys and get two more. All we need is quirk and age. Created at and updated at, you don't need. Those are automatically handled thanks to uh, the now and now we put in. So uh, let's get rid of these and put quirk in there. And we'll get rid of this as well. Put quirk. And now input ID is quirk. And name is quirk. And then we have a label for last name again here, which we don't need. So let's change that, that, and that to age. Switch this to age. All right, don't forget the colon after quirk, Shane. Okay, oh, there we go. The auto format saves the day there. All right, so that's that's your basic form. Just like that, you have a label for each one. Uh, this got a little screwy up here for some reason. Let's see if we can't reformat that a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, this div is in the way. I think that's what's causing it. That is our div mb3 class. Um, okay, hold on guys. Little micromanagey stuff here. Okay, there we go. Let's bring these up. Let's see. Oh, uh, why are you doing this? Hold on. Input type is text. Oops, text, class type is that, ID is that, name, bring that up as well, equals first name, perfect. Okay. And label, bring up this label, try and get it to behave as well. There we go. Auto formatting sometimes is a little bit finicky. Um, don't ask me why, I really don't know, but first name, forgot to switch that, so form label, form control, form label, form control, there we go, all right. If why did it auto format, I don't know, but let's see how it looks so far. We'll refresh this page, hit F5, there we go, your hero information, first name, last name, quirk, and age, beautiful, and that's the same order that's in our database. First name, last name, quirk, age. Like I said, don't worry about created at, updated at, or ID. We'll handle all that later on. Well, the ID actually handles itself because we set it to auto increment. So um, that is good to go. And created at and updated at will be handled by the database query by these uh, now parentheses and now parentheses statements. So anyway, that being said, we have our form. We need a button on the bottom as well to actually submit, uh, for our user to submit. So we'll do input type equals, we're gonna call it submit. It will not work if you do not say submit here. So, I wanna make sure you do that. But you can give it any class you want. For me, btn, btn-primary, and value equals, uh, we'll say create hero. Save that. I'm going to refresh on my other screen here. And there we go. We got a cool button. And we're going to give this a little bit of breathing room and get this uh, form in the middle of our page. Give it a little more breathing room too. So I like to be a little bit micromanagey with my with my forms here. Sorry. So we're going to give that button margin top three. That's a bootstrap class. It's great. I love it. And we are going to give this, uh, let's say, uh, let's see, what do I want to give you? Mm. Oh, you know what? We need to style the card to be in the middle of the page. 
mx-auto should do it, ideally. There we go. All right, so that did center it in the page. I'll show it here in just a sec. mx-auto, and we're gonna give it a margin top of three as well. Save, come back to our page, hit refresh. There we go. A Little bit more breathing room. It looks good. I love it. So, now we've got this. Now, you might be thinking, hey, we need a way to actually submit some kind of form here, right? Yes, we do. You'd be correct. So, if we wrap all of this stuff, including the button, you do not want to leave the button out of this. If we control shift P, there's the Emmet abbreviation. Hit that. Type in form. Boom. There we go. We have a form tag wrapping our entire form. So, in here, in the form action, we are going to make a route called slash create. And whenever you are sending data to the database and writing stuff to the database or updating info or deleting, anytime you're doing that, other than select queries, you want to use a post. Um, the platform does a really great job of explaining why, but you want to make a post. <laughs> you definitely want to use posts. So, yeah. So now, let's create this slash create route to uh, make our form do some work for us here. So if we head back to server.py, we can do an at app.post. CISO showed us that, which is amazing. Uh, you can also do at app um, dot route slash, or yeah, dot route, and then have your route in here. And you can do create, and you can do method uh, methods equals and then post or I think it's square brackets and quotes Something like that. I think it's like this. I can't remember entirely, but I like to do the uh, at app dot post Makes it a little easier to to read I think and that way you know that this is a post request so define uh, Create we'll just call it create nice and simple and this one, we are going to have to pass in... Well, no, we're not, actually. We imported request from Flask. So, we come down here, and we want to use this hero method that we created. So, how do we do that? Well, we simply... We already imported the hero class into this file. So, we just do hero with a capital H. It calls on the hero class. Dot and we call on the function that we the class method that we created which is in this case is create hero add some parentheses to invoke the function and we uh, will do request dot form this is where uh, having your names equivalent to your database really come in handy here like, absolutely will save your bacon on this. And I have some misla mislabeled here, actually. And I'm glad I looked over when I did. Because this would not have worked and I would have been very confused. Last underscore name. Okay, let's double check, make sure everything's right now. Label for quirk is quirk. Input type is text. ID is that, all that good stuff. Okay. Age, 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 last name, last name, matches up, matches up. Okay, so as long as all of our names match up with our columns in our database, we are good to go. So, being that this is a post route, you never want to use render template on a post route. Ever. You never want to do that. You always want to redirect. Um, and the reason being is because, let's say... The, the platform does a really good job, but let's say, uh, of explaining this, of course, but let's say I'm submitting credit card information, and it doesn't redirect me. It just renders the template on a post. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to send this info again? And it's going to double charge my card, and it's going to suck, and I'm going to have a bad time and be very upset. So, with that being said, never render on a post. So, we return... A redirect to where 
to an index dot h or uh, an HTML page that we haven't made yet called allheroes.html. And now that is good to go. <clears throat> we have everything in here. Let's uh, let's create this page and grab all the heroes out of our database now and make sure that everything is on the up and up or alternatively actually uh query equals that yeah okay so we can do this instead we'll go results equal and now we have a variable called results that's capturing all this information that we are throwing into the database this is in our hero.py by the way in case that wasn't obvious what we can do now is print results to make sure our query went off and did its thing uh, and then we can return results just like that so now to the terminal it's gonna print out all of our stuff and actually I'm gonna do something a little bit fancy from p print import p print this is pretty print uh, for those who don't know it basically makes your uh, printouts in your terminal much easier to read so much easier to read it's ridiculous so um, anyway let's create an all heroes page super fast in our templates folder of course all underscore heroes dot html sweet got that I'm gonna grab the uh, link right here and we'll open up all heroes.html right over here. Get a boilerplate going. All heroes. And paste that, whoops, uh, paste that link right there. There we go. And we're simply for now just going to have an h1 uh, saying success. And we'll also give that a class of text center because I like it to be in the middle. Oh, it's also open over here. Well, whatever. Anyway, cool. So now we should, in theory, when we type some stuff in this form, it should submit it to the database, redirect us to a page that says success right up here. So let's, uh, let's do some testing here. We're going to say all might all for one and I don't know how old he is but I'm gonna guess uh, 40 we'll say 40 that'll work create hero and nothing seemed to happen so let's do that uh, let's see Are all of our files saved slash create uh, let's see index.html form action slash create Method is post, okay. Input type is submit, yes, that's what we want. Let's see. Should have redirected us to allheroes.html. Didn't seem to want to do that, so let's see. Get static solar, yeah, 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 okay. Hero.createHero, hero. we passed in request.form, so that should have worked. Uh, let's refresh, there we go. All right, all might, all for one, 40. Create hero. Okay, so at least we got progress, they're not found, so let's see what happened there. Um, yeah, here we go. Insert into heroes, and it has all this good stuff right there. That's the query that it ran. Um, post create get all heroes.html. Did I misspell that? H e r o e s, h e r o e s dot html. Why is that not working? Um, let's see. Oh, uh, because when you redirect, you have to do a route. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that was my bad. So, add app.route 
slash all underscore heroes define all heroes return render template whoops I didn't mean to do that uh, exit hold on I screwed something up sorry guys hang on just a sec change directory back in there we're gonna say exit just in case yeah okay we bailed out of the virtual environment. Okay, there we go. Now we're fully bailed out. All right, anyway, sorry. Render template all heroes dot HTML. Okay. Now we just do slash all heroes as our route. So basically what this is going to do is this is going to run and this is going to say, all right, cool. We ran your stuff redirect over to this route please and this route's going to say hey that's my turn and it's going going to render the all heroes.html template so we're going to have a couple all mites in our database at this point but that's okay so let's uh head back to the home page i don't have the server running <laughs> pip env shell server.py all right there we go Cool, we're back up and running. Uh, let's put in Deku. Deku, Midoriya, uh, Quirk is all for one. And he, I get, I would guess he's like, I don't know, uh, 20? Success, okay, awesome. Now, what if we wanted to grab all the heroes out of our database and display them on that all heroes page, which was my plan initially going into this. Uh, we are running <laughs> high on time, unfortunately. Um, so basically, I have a class method written in my other uh, my other project, and we're just going to replace all these users with heroes instead. So I'm going to copy this, and we're going to go back to our hero.py and put in our class method of get all. And instead of users, we're going to type in heroes. And we're passing in cls.db, of course, and the query in query database. Uh, we don't need to pass in any data on this method because we're simply selecting. Um, if, we're, if we are updating or inserting or deleting from the database, we have to pass in some data into this class method. Otherwise, it just passes itself in. We call it good. So... Anyway, we're going to change this, all of these users, to heroes. And we're going to change this, these users, to hero, lowercase h. So, all this function is doing, we're running the query, we're assigning it to a variable called results, we're creating an empty list called heroes, and then we are for hero in results, we are appending the class of each hero right here, our cosplayer, inside of these uh, results that we get back, and we're appending them to this list. So it's going to become a list of dictionaries, essentially, and then we are returning that. And now, we've got that good to go. Let's, uh, let's create... So now that we have that class method done and ready to go, we can call it. We can say hero.getAll. But that isn't all we need to do because if we just call it, it's not assigned to anything and we can't access it in our all heroes HTML yet. So we need to create something to hold it, like a variable. Heroes equals hero.getAll, and now we want to pass it through when we render this template. So we're saying heroes equals heroes. Seems redundant, but it works. <laughs> Trust me, it works. So, um, now we have successfully passed that through. We can loop through all of these heroes and create a nice looking table out of all of our heroes here. 
Uh, let me look on my stuff over here for bootstrap table. Yes, I want a table, please. All right, cool. So instead of saying success here, also we are going to throw a dot container here. And we're going to make sure that div is down there, the slash div. All right, all heroes. And we're going to also MX auto this bad boy so it's in the middle. And I'm copying some table HTML from Git Bootstrap. It looks overwhelming, don't worry, we'll fix it. Um, for the head, we're going to have first name, last name, quirk, and age. We could also do uh, created at and updated at, those are just as accessible. Um, because we are literally getting everything out of the database. So we, any column in our database is going to be accessible through this HTML. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. But uh, yeah, just food for thought, you know. So we're going to get rid of most of this stuff uh, right there. All right. So we've got a table head here. Um, let's see. I don't need the table head, actually. We just need a bunch of these TDs. We've got four things to pass in here to loop through and print out to the page. So we will need one more TD. All right. Now, uh, in order to access this stuff, all these heroes that we've got, we've passed in the variable heroes, so it is accessible in this HTML page. So, uh, what that means is that we are able to use good old Jinja syntax, everybody's favorite, and I have uh, an extension where if I type J4, bam, it creates a for loop, which is super duper duper handy, and I love it. Uh, if you don't have that, you just type this out, the curly braces, parentheses, for, whatever, in, whatever. So in this case, we're going to go hero in heroes. And that is the variable we passed in. You can see it's lighting up here, um, which is awesome. Uh, and for each one, each time we go through this loop, we want to create a row with all of the data from the heroes in there that we need up here. So good example of that. It's going to, uh, you know what? We're actually going to do something a little bit fancy here. Boom, boom, boom. Get our Jinja syntax in there. We're going to say hero dot. And now, this is where our column names come in. First underscore name, you can see it's auto populating there. The IntelliSense is telling me, hey, looks like you've got access to this, which is what we want. Quirk, and of course, age. And now, you always have to end your for loop, so we'll end it after the table row. And four. And there we go. That looks right to me. So let's see. And we're gonna add a button here too, on uh, on this page. Let's see. Where is? I'm gonna close up the card because I don't want it in the card. I just want it in the container. Uh, we're just gonna create an a tag with the route slash all underscore heroes. You don't want to do all heroes dot HTML because the heroes won't be passed in and it's just going to flag you an error and it's going to cause a headache. So don't do that. Um, so yeah, just a nice a tag here. Class equals, uh, we already have text center. Uh, so we're going to say btn, btn slash primary just to make it look like a button. And I'm just going to say all heroes. And give it a little margin top while we're at it. Margin top three. Save that. Come back to our... Uh, whoops. Come back to our good old page here. And we're just going to refresh at localhost. There's our all heroes button right there. Snag it. Boom. There we go. This is rendering everything that's in our database. All Might only shows up in there once, which is great. <laughs> He's got all for one. He's 40 years old. Deku Midoriya, 
all for one as well, 20 years old. So there we go, and we can even add more people in here if we want. So let's head back to, let's, uh, let's test that, let's do a live test. Um, I will make Bob Evans, and he is the mashed potato lord. And he is 70 years old. Create hero. Boom, there's Bob Evans right there. And there we go. We've done it. This is a full stack application that is writing to a database. So yeah, that is, uh, that is kind of how you just go about creating a full stack application in Python and Flask and HTML and using MySQL as your database, uh, all that good stuff. Um, and of course we can always implement more stuff into this. Uh, so basically what we did here, if you're in the dojo, is the users create read assignment, the user CR. Most of you have done this. There's some people that are still struggling, which is why I'm making this video. And uh, just in case anybody on YouTube wants to get into this, it's super fun. It's great. I love it. Um, yeah. So we're done for now. We can always implement update and delete later on. Uh, I did say I was going to modularize this. So how would we go about doing that? Well, there's a few steps involved. Um, your server.py is going to have very minimal in it. Uh, I can show you an example of what it's going to look like. Let's see. Let's open up this server.py. It's going to look something like this by the time you're done. So if you notice, all of the routes have moved. And if we look in here, in this other uh, folder that I have, we now have a ton of folders. One's called config, one's called controllers, and then we got models, which is all where all of our class classes and our class methods live. The controllers are where the app, uh, the app routes live. Uh, and then, of course, static and templates. And then we have this init.py, which I find to be interesting because this is literally all it is. <laughs> it's just this stuff. So how would we go about modularizing this? Uh, let's see if I can figure it out in just a... A short amount of time. I'm going to get out of the virtual environment first. Now that we know the stuff works, we're happy. I'm happy at least. I'm just going to copy this init.py and uh, use it <laughs> because I'm lazy. So let's see. Double underscore init, double underscore dot pi. Boom. Secret key, I'm gonna mash my head on the keyboard for a second. Oh shit, okay, well, I didn't wanna do that. Um, there we go, don't copy my secret key, guys. I swear, if you do, I will be very upset with you. Also, we need a couple Fs in there. There we go, pay your respects. Anyway, so we have a init.py. So the first thing we actually wanna do is create a folder in here called flask underscore app. And then we move everything, almost everything, into that particular folder. Um, let's see, everything but your server and your pip files, essentially, is going to go in there. So, init.py, into flask app. Static, into it. Templates, into there. Uh, let's see. Hero.py, we'll deal with you in just a second. Oh wait, let's see, refactoring, uh, okay. We'll go ahead and say okay to that. MySQL connection goes in there as well. That is fine, you can refactor. I will switch it and fix it anyway. So now if you minimize your Flask underscore app, all you've got is this. So, that looks right. Now we need more folders in here. We need a config folder which is where our SQL connection is going to live. Yes, go ahead. Uh, oh, excuse me, that needs to go into the Flask app folder. There we go. All right, kind of hard to see, I know, but bear with me. Uh, inside the Flask app, we also need models, and we also need controllers. Oops, that needs to be plural. If you don't make it plural, you're gonna have a bad time. All right, so we have a hero.py that has all of our class methods that goes in models. Yes, go ahead. 
We're going to fix all the imports here in a minute, so don't worry, because we're going to have to do some refactoring on all of those. So, inside of controllers, we are going to create a pluralized version of our class file. So it's going to be heroes.py. There it is right there. Perfect. And now, just for the sake of reference, let's see, I don't need this one anymore. Um, let's see. I'm going to use my, uh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to use my crud ones as kind of a reference point here. So bear with me, guys. My SQL connection doesn't change. So leave that as it is. It's fine. Uh, in your controllers, we need to do all this good stuff here. This is what we want. So, in our heroes.py, wherever I put it, oh, it's opened up on my other, my other thing. Get over here. Okay. In our heroes.py, we want hero, but instead of that, we want hero. So, essentially, we're importing this stuff uh, from Flask app, import app. From Flask, we're doing all of the Flask stuff that we need. And from the models, we're importing the hero class. Because this, like I said, is where all of our uh, routes are going to live. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can probably just cut them out. There we go. All right, and server.py will save you. Heroes.py, come down a little. Paste all of our routes in there. Boom, save it, done. All right, and in hero, this broke a little bit. So let's try and fix it. Uh, instead of My Hero Academia, we're going to say flask underscore app dot config import connect to MySQL. Uh, I think that should that should fix it. We may have to do dot MySQL connection. There we go. All right, when it turns yellow, you're good to go. So that fixed that. Uh, let's see. These are, seem to be fixed. Static is still good where it's at. Templates is still good where it's at. Init under uh, all the underscores init pi are good. Server dot pi seems to be doing well. Let's see, did I have did I have uh, the other stuff in my other server.py? Oh, there it is. A little bit lower than I thought. Import hero. Oh. Oh, okay, I see, I see. So uh, this, we want to refactor this to flask underscore app dot controllers import the hero file uh, let's see let's make sure oh heroes heroes like that there we go all right now <clears throat> excuse me now if we did everything properly it should all work sorry guys had to refer to my other stuff so much I was hoping to not have to do that but um, let's give it a give it a whirl, as CISO says. Pip env shell pi server dot pi. We got the debug pin. That's a good sign. We're gonna come back here. Just restart the whole thing, and it's not found. Okay, that's fine. We can fix that. Uh, let's see. I think this might be my issue right here in the server dot pi. Let's see if it's in my no, it's not. Okay. Ah. Okay, I think I might see where it's wrong. Um, whoops. From flask app, underscore app, import app. There we go. Let's see if that fixed it. Hit the refresh on it. Boom, there we go. There we go, assignment, or uh, project is still working as expected. We're gonna create a hero, drifting shade. Quirk is going to be, ooh, what quirk do I want? Mm, 
I'm gonna make myself an airbender. And I'm 32. Not for long. And there we go. Drifting Shade is an airbender at 32 years old. And we have the mashed potato lord Bob Evans alongside All Might and Deku. <laughs> Perfect. Now, if you want to get fancy, uh, and of course the user CR assignment has you create a button to be able to go back to create a hero. Easy to do that. It's just a, an href link to your route. Uh, an A, a link, that is. So, there you go. That's how you can make a full stack application in Python. Uh, and of course, any other queries you want to involve the database, come back to your hero.py, add them in here as class methods, print out those results. Print, 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 print. It will save you a massive headache, I promise. So, other than that, things to remember. Make sure if you're gonna use Jinja syntax on an HTML, you gotta make sure that you are assigning it to a variable, whatever you need, assigning it to a variable, passing it through when you render that HTML template, otherwise it's not gonna work. So, with all that in mind and all that being said, this video has gone on long enough. So, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. It's been a long one. Probably my longest video ever. No, it's not. It's not my longest video ever. <laughs> but I appreciate everybody. If you liked it, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe maybe if you want. Um, yeah, and shout out to all my ninjas out there. You guys are killing it. I hope this video is incredibly helpful to you or at least clarifies some things um, in one way or another. And as always, if you guys need anything, reach out, hit me up. You know where to find me on Discord. Uh, everybody else on YouTube, love you guys. Peace out. Have a great day.